Welcome to this week's edition of Taiwan Outlook. I'm your host, Chi Chen Lo. On July 15, 1987, the government of Taiwan lifted the martial law, which was imposed for 40 years. And now, 20 years have passed since 1987. In terms of human rights situation, what a change in Taiwan. And this is the topic we want to talk about today. And joining us today is John Fortran, Center for the Human Rights Study in Suzhou University, Dr. Huang Mo. Mei Huang. Professor Huang, welcome to our program. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm delighted to be invited here to this program. And uh, I'm sure we have much to talk about. Uh, you refer to uh, the lifting of the martial law. Uh, it made quite a bit of difference, no doubt. Uh, right. Prior to that, uh, human rights was a taboo, I should say. Mm -hmm. But since then, of course, we can openly discuss uh, human rights. Many uh, civil society organizations have been working very hard to promote human rights, and human rights education have been uh, making quite a bit of progress. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, I would say we have made progress, but much remain to be done. What do you think is the biggest change since 1987 in terms of human rights situation in Taiwan? Well, I, I think first is that the fear, uh, of course, uh, to a different degree for a different group of people, mm -hmm. uh, the fear has been lifted that we can now uh, really get down to the business of promoting uh, human rights. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we are faced with many, many challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, in part, that challenge has something to do with our traditional value. Mm -hmm. In part, it has something to do with uh, the political structure, which, of course, uh, since 2000, uh, since the year 2000, has been going through substantive change. Mm -hmm. And in part, probably, it is due to our habit. It's very difficult, That's I right. assure you, to change habit. So that many people, uh, I would say, uh, including government officials, uh, including professors in the university, uh, find it very difficult mm. to change uh, their habits. Are you saying that there are still people uh, living, you know, under this kind of shade of, of, of yes, martial law? I, I would say so. I think uh, now, uh, in particular, in the past few years, quite a few studies uh, have been done precisely uh, on this problem. That is, to what degree that some people are still kind of impose uh, a safe control on themselves mm -hmm. as to what they can say, as to what they can do. Mm -hmm. But on the whole, I would say the fear is being lifted mm -hmm. and so that uh, we can uh, talk about human rights. We can talk about uh, where we are going mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, democratic uh, process. Mm -hmm. uh, we can talk about uh, well, the, uh, the mass media, mm -hmm. uh, the mass media certainly have come in, and I would say rightly is uh, for quite a bit of criticism. That's right. And, and for some people, the biggest change uh, as a result of the lifting of martial law is the freedom of expression and the yes. freedom of media in Taiwan. But they are concerned about this uh, media circus, you know, chaotic yes. situation created yes. by the media. Yes. Yes. So they are talking about the so-called good old days, you know, of the uh, martial well, law period. Do you think that's the that, right... That, that, of course, is an illusion. I, I, it doesn't make sense for me to talk about the good old days. But that doesn't say that we are not faced with serious problem mm -hmm. of the mass media. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, the mass media certainly uh, could use a greater degree of say discipline. And mm -hmm. then I would say that readers, you and me, need to be much more discriminatory mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that we should make a difference what is a uh, decent uh, report, what is not, and we should uh, we, we choose accordingly. Mm -hmm. uh, so that I, I, I think, uh, I hope, given time, that we will come to learn that we deserve a decent mm -hmm. uh, mass media. Mm -hmm. And people say that there should be a check and balance uh, of the media by the uh, civil society in Taiwan. And as a result of the liberalization and democratization in Taiwan, there's a booming or surging of civil society. How do you see the development on the part of uh, civil society? Oh. Uh, no doubt, I, I, I think that uh, the civil society is uh, uh, getting 
uh, quite strong, uh, working hard, is doing many things uh, yeah. like I can cite uh, very readily that many of the uh, NGO, uh, for example, mm -hmm. like say the women's uh, right organization, mm -hmm. uh, they uh, uh, like, like, like say, uh, well, that is something that uh, probably only uh, begin to make a difference uh, mm -hmm. in the past two or three years. Uh, that is the campaign against this penalty. Yeah. Uh, not to speak of the more traditional uh, mm -hmm. issue, such as the protection of environment mm -hmm. or the protection of the right of the indigenous people. So I would say that civil society uh, is alive and well, is doing much work to a degree. I would almost say, uh, I, I think I'm quite prepared to say that uh, the civil society, the NGO, have been putting a great deal of pressure on the government mm -hmm. uh, in so many areas. Uh, the civil society and the NGO are leading the government. Mm -hmm. But some people say that uh, in terms of the activities of NGOs in Taiwan, they are mainly small and medium-sized NGOs. Uh, so they, yeah. do, they do not really have some strong influence over the policies in Taiwan. Do you agree with that kind of uh, statement? Uh, uh, no, I think we need to uh, really to examine uh, the, uh, all, all, all the, uh, the NGO, if you will, and uh, in what fear are they engaged in what kind of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. uh, they have. Uh, for example, like say, uh, I refer to the women's rights organization. I would say they are quite effective, mm -hmm. not only in law making, uh, but in uh, the uh, consciousness uh, raising. Uh, now, to, I, I, I think the uh, young uh, women, uh, or, or uh, like, like say in their 20s and 30s, I assure you, think so differently mm -hmm. from their mother. Uh, the generation of their mother and their grandmother, so a great deal of change uh, in thinking had taken place. Mm -hmm. And not only that, uh, they are putting pressure on the government, uh, they are seizing uh, the setting of agenda, and they are contribute to uh, the lawmaking. So I, uh, I, I think you have to say in what area uh, that we are talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Uh, the anti this penalty uh, like I say, a coalition was only uh, formed about uh, four years ago uh, in the year 2003, mm -hmm. but they have been campaigning uh, mm -hmm. for the abolition of this penalty. And just imagine how difficult that is, mm -hmm. given our traditional value, mm -hmm. given our mindset. Uh, we tend to agree that uh, in time of crisis, in time of rapid change, we need heavy mm -hmm. penalty. Mm -hmm. But, well, they are making uh, headway. Mm -hmm. And they are putting a great deal. They are uh, attempting to persuade the government if not to abolish mm -hmm. this penalty now, certainly not to execute mm -hmm. any of uh, the criminal condemned to mm -hmm. uh, this. And so that uh, this past year, uh, this last year, uh, that uh, no one mm -hmm. had been executed. Mm -hmm. And that, that, uh, that, that did not come mm -hmm. very easily. Uh, that really, uh, if you examine the case quite carefully, uh, that uh, really I would attribute uh, the success to the hard work of mm -hmm. many, many NGO groups in particular, this coalition. Do you think that there's, there's a possibility to put the end to the uh, death penalty in Taiwan? In I, the future? I hope so. I hope so. I, I, I think for me, uh, of course, I'm quite uh, prepared to entertain different uh, opinions. Mm -hmm. I'm quite prepared to face challenge. For me, it's quite useless. Uh, that is, the penalty is useless. Mm -hmm. It does not have deterrent effect, as many people would like to think. And, uh, well, I, I, I think we deserve to live uh, in a better society. Mm -hmm. uh, and not only that, uh, not, not only is it useless, uh, not only is it useless, uh, it doesn't deter probably uh, many people from the uh, disadvantaged group, uh, from the uh, law, if I uh, were allowed to use mm -hmm. the word, uh, from the law classes are more likely. Mm -hmm to be sentenced to death. Mm -hmm. 
witnessed the Su Jian He case. Mm -hmm. That has been going on for so many years. That's right. What happened? We had three poor young, by again, uh, if you forgive me for uh, uh, saying this, that we had uh, three poor young men to, uh, sentenced to die quite a few times, if, if, if I may uh, 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 say so. And now the, the case is still uh, being appeared. Yeah. So that uh, both on moral ground as well as on very practical uh, ground mm -hmm. that the death penalty should go. And we deserve mm -hmm. to live in a better society. Speaking of traditional values, yes. you know, as we know that the Chinese families or Chinese uh, cultures allowed the uh, parents to punish yes. their kids, you know, uh -huh. physically. Uh -huh. And Taiwan is, as far as I know, is the, the first country banning uh, physical punishment by you know, teachers in school. Do you think that's uh, oh, oh, uh, all right? I, big, I, I you, know, yes. you, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, do you think that's a good uh, approach? or good uh, development in terms of Taiwan's human rights oh, situation? All right. Now, uh, I had participated, as you know, to, uh, to some degree mm -hmm. uh, uh, to, uh, in the work of the uh, Human Rights Education Committee mm -hmm. of the Ministry of Education. And we debated that, uh, we discussed that for long years, mm -hmm. and almost without exception, without any opposition, we decide that physical punishment in school must and it is this uh, debate, if you will, this give and take, this negotiation, this work that result in, uh, I think you are referring to the policy that not physical punishment should be allowed in the uh, school. Yeah. Now, uh, this policy is facing a very severe challenge from the teacher That's and right. probably from some parents. and. Uh, I don't agree with them. I think mm -hmm. uh, they don't understand. I, I think we need to uh, really talk to them. We need to uh, communicate with them, explain to them mm -hmm. why it is so important that we do away with fiscal punishment. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, some of the uh, punishment uh, uh, do not look so severe Maybe not physically, but certainly it produced such devastating mental effect on the children. Mm -hmm. And if for that reason only, physical punishment should not be allowed. Mm -hmm. It should not be allowed in school. It should not be allowed in the family. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I hope that uh, these uh, traditional values, these, uh, the, 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 these uh, power on the part of the parents uh, would be uh, gradually uh, eliminated. Yeah. Uh, I don't think parents should be given that much power, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as far as I know, some parents are complaining that yes. it's mo getting more difficult to discipline their, their, their children, their kids, because children know their rights and they will even you know, right. uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, report and to the schools that their parents are punishing them and so on. Yes, yes. So, so how can we balance the two okay. concerns? Now, now uh, that uh, not only the parents, uh, the teacher company, great, yeah. Yeah. they say, now from now on, how can I teach? How can I discipline my student? And the answer is really very, very simple, that you need to find different way mm -hmm. that punishment, physical punishment doesn't work and it's not what we wanted. Mm -hmm. okay. I think uh, that uh, there, there, there was a study that I happened to come across really by a colleague of ours mm -hmm. uh, in the psychological department by Professor uh, Wang Chonggui. Mm -hmm. And uh, he made a study, he interviewed many, many of the teachers mm -hmm. and probably some parents, uh, I, I don't know how many, uh, as to their attitude toward uh, 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 physical punishment, as, uh, uh, as to their attitude toward discipline the uh, student. Mm -hmm. And the finding is, in a sense, is quite uh, uh, is encouraging, uh, can be expected, mm -hmm. and that is uh, those teachers more confident of their skill, mm -hmm. more confident of their knowledge to handle the situation in the classroom, 
They don't think we need punishment. Mm -hmm. Those teachers, without that kind of safe confidence, without that kind of knowledge, tend to argue mm -hmm. they really must need this power to punish. Yeah, but as we know, it's very difficult to change the old habits and try yes, to change yes. the uh, think old thinking. Absolutely. So the education is very important. Yes. So when we come back, we will talk about the human rights situation in Taiwan and how will that affect the human rights situation in this island. Sure. So mm -hmm. stay with us. We'll be right back.